how to make a Raspberry Pi accessible to Windows over a local network. If you already have the Raspberry Pi operating system and a keyboard, mouse, and monitor, then go ahead and connect it to the network. If you don't have those things, or if you're just now unboxing the Raspberry Pi, then you should see my earlier video, which will help you get started from scratch. First, it's a good idea to update all your software packages. So start with a sudo apt-get update, followed by a sudo apt-get upgrade. This process can take a while, so while it's working, go to your Windows machine and then access the putty.org website. Putty is a Windows utility that will allow us to use a SSH or secure shell connection to the Raspberry Pi. As with everything else you download from the internet, you should scan it with your favorite anti-malware tool first, and if it looks okay, open it, and then return back to your Raspberry Pi. When the updates are done, reboot the Raspberry Pi system, and when the desktop reappears, open the terminal again so that we can run sudo raspi config. At minimum, we need to go to interface options ssh, follow the on-screen instructions to enable ssh, and then if you haven't done so already, you should really change that default password of Raspberry to a password with better entropy so that we don't get ourselves hacked. This is just good for cybersecurity. Enter and confirm your own password, and when you're done, exit out of Raspi config, and in the terminal, enter ifconfig. We need to find the internet protocol address of the Raspberry Pi that was given to us by the local router. This IP address also goes by the name inet, so you're looking for four integers with each separated by a dot. Memorize or record that address, then go back to the Windows machine. Inside the PuTTY application, enter the Raspberry Pi's IP address as we just saw it, then select port 22 and SSH. Click the open button to proceed, and because Windows does not yet recognize the Raspberry Pi, you are likely to see a security alert asking if you trust the device. If things look good, click yes, and in the resulting window, you're going to see another command line. Enter the username and password for the Raspberry Pi, and you're going to see a prompt just like you would see it in the Raspberry Pi terminal itself. If you're happy using just this terminal, then you're basically done with the installation, but before you go, do consider liking and sharing the video. If you want to access the graphical desktop, then we now need to use this terminal in Windows or the Raspberry Pi to install XRDP and VNC support. If you want to install this from a clean slate, we'll do this by typing sudo apt-get remove XRDP followed by VNC for server followed by tight VNC server. Next, we're going to install tight VNC server using sudo apt-get install tight VNC server. Confirm using the Y key, give it a moment, and when it's done, we can now install XRDP in a similar fashion. sudo apt-get install XRDP. By default, the XRDP service will start itself automatically on the Raspberry Pi, so after the installation is complete, you can simply exit. Finally, to see that Raspberry Pi desktop, use Windows Search to locate the remote desktop application. Enter the Raspberry Pi's IP address, and then click Connect. You will probably see a warning asking you to verify the device that you're connecting to, and if nothing looks suspicious, go ahead and click OK to proceed. You should see the following prompt to enter your username and Raspberry Pi password again, and once you authenticate, you should now have access to the Raspberry Pi desktop. So, two final notes. First, the IP address of your Raspberry Pi was probably assigned temporarily by your own router. This is done through your router's DHCP server, and if you leave your Raspberry Pi off the network for too long, and then try and reconnect, your Pi might wind up with a different address. So, you should optionally check your router's instructions on permanently assigning an IP address if you want to avoid that. Secondly, while you can cut and paste text from Windows to the Raspberry Pi or vice versa, you apparently can't cut and paste files. To transfer files to and from the Raspberry Pi using the PuTTY application that you already installed, you should see my recent video on using PSCP to transfer files. So that's it for now. 
With this remote access installed, I will probably be using this Raspberry Pi as a backup early warning system for things like severe weather, thanks to software-defined radio, or possibly tracking aircraft using ADS-B out. To see updates on how those projects are going, be sure to join me on Patreon. Members can take part in a monthly poll, and the Lessons Learned series covers traps, pitfalls, and other mistakes, and site notes after technical builds like this one. The poll for December 2020 wants to know if you'd like to see electric elements in video form this fall. So far I've covered copper, lithium, silver, and zinc, but only in text form. Stay posted for more updates on electronics, robotics, communication systems, and cybersecurity. And as always, have a great day.